Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a first person shooter in Unity and welcome to episode 3. In this tutorial we're going to add in some more textures to make kind of like I think an enclosed room for us to play in and we're also going to look at some simple physics. Don't forget, click subscribe button and click on the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series and everything else on game development on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So, up to now we have a nice simple area. But what I really want to try and achieve in uh, this tutorial is a, a bit of a room. So we're going to have some textures for brick. I'm we'll also bring in another a couple of other textures for you to play around with if you want to. Uh, so let's start by doing that. Let's drag and drop these three textures into Unity. And as always, you can get these on my website. Head over there, downloads and assets, uh, the FPS series and tutorial number three. So we have this brick wall here and let's start by creating the normal map for it to make it look a little better than what it would do. So hold control, press D and let's rename that to brick wall 001 underscore N. And let's make sure we do have it selected. And if um, it's worth pointing out that if you see these here, you know, you've got start of the name and then dot dot dot, you can always see the full name down here at the bottom. So let's select this texture type normal map and apply. You can see this one has indeed turned a lot more purple than what this does, although this one is very faint, this one is much more apparent. So how can we make it so as this is now a wall? Nice, quick, easy way. So do you remember when um, we've been duplicating these down here? Well, let's do it with this as well. So this floor, let's hold control and press D. And you'll notice over here in the hierarchy, it has created a duplicate. So let's change this. Instead of saying floor, let's have wall. Now, although it currently isn't a wall, it is still a floor. We can manipulate the scale over here and the position. So let's make it tall, thin and move it over here. So let's change the scale on the X to, let's keep it as 20. Uh, let's change the Y to 10 and you'll see instantly that shoots up up here but in actual fact it hasn't it's just made it taller and let's I'll tell you what I'm going to keep the scale as 10 on the X I think and tear, let's have one on the Z so it appears much thinner now let's drag and drop this brick wall texture onto our wall there we go and now let's select the wall, go to our material, and let's add the normal map over here. And let's play around a little with this here. So let's change it to albedo, make it a little more metallic, less smooth. And I'm going to hold control so I can snap it and move it over here, just so as it is in the right position at the edge. And I'm going to drag it upwards to about there, and then drag it to the end about there. So now that wall has snapped into position with everything else in the scene. And let's hold control, press D on the wall, and then let's drag it over here, still holding the control for snap settings. Now we have an entire wall and that looks kind of cool. So if you're not happy with how this looks in terms of the normal map, you can actually change the normal map straight away to a grayscale just by those two clicks. Now, obviously this looks a little bit gritty and grotty and shiny at the same time. Uh, I can't remember if I mentioned it last tutorial, but you can change how this looks visually just by changing a couple of things inside the material itself. Like if we change the normal map to 0.1, it doesn't quite look as shiny and gritty and strange. So maybe play around with some of the settings. Most of the time you'll find that one or the other setting is usually good in terms of grayscale. So it, I think it's entirely up to you how you want to portray your actual image. So I'm going to increase my normal map to maybe two, I think, just to give it a bit of a gritty looking feel, but not overly shiny for no reason. I want it to be slightly damp, but I don't want it to be glowing in a weird kind of way like it was with the grayscale version. So how do we enclose this room further? Well, let's take this wall, hold control, press D again, and let's just rotate by 90 degrees on the Y. Cool, simple, 
and let's snap it over here and then snap it this way. Now, things are starting to look a little strange and obviously everything will become much more apparent when we get into um, the next tutorial, I think. And you'll notice here the light. I want to leave this here as it is because, again, this is something that I want to delve into when we get into lighting. Uh, for now, let's duplicate it again and bring it over here. And now we can actually select both of these walls and bring them over here at the same time. So if we select wall three and wall two and then hold control, press D, you can snap them over here both at the same time. Cool. Now we have some kind of room that we can move around in. It doesn't look fantastic yet, but rest assured, things will change as we go further in. Now you'll notice this wall is upside down as well. This basically means that essentially every object that you have in terms of a cube will apply the same texture to each face. And that's what it has done here. It just appears upside down. However, on the back, it is the right way up. Now, there are multiple different ways that you can change this, because if we look at this one right here, it is upside down on the outside. And I don't think it's an issue per se when it comes to cubes, but it's something to be aware of. And you can actually change it depending on the rotation of your object itself. A good way to illustrate this is to place the upside down section towards its own counterpart. And what I mean by that is we want this upside down bit to face this way and we want this upside down bit to face that way and we can actually change that in the settings itself for rotation so if we take this wall right here at the front we can change how that's rotated so let's do that let's change the rotation on the x to 90 let's change the rotation on the z also to 90 and let's set the scale to 10 on the Z so it becomes a perfect cube. And you can see that just rotating this, it can change how it looks visually. On the side there, that's not exactly fantastic. However, it can be changed because each face will appear in a similar fashion. So if we look at this here, upside down, now let's change the X rotation back to zero and the Z back to zero. And once again, you can see this is how it all pans out. Hopefully you'll be able to see now that this side is okay, this side is okay, and this side is okay, which means that all we need to do is rotate on the Y backwards, like so, and it will give us the right way up. So let's set that to zero. Let's set the scale on the X to one, and you can see that this is now the right way up, both on the inside and the outside. So, you can either apply the same logic to this wall here, or you can just duplicate this one here. Again, all you really need to do is replicate what this is here. So you need 0, 0, 0, 1, 10, 10. So 0, 0, 0, 1, 10, 10. Perfect. And that wall is now aligned and looks perfectly fine. So what does that mean for the rest? Well, it means that this one can just be rotated either perfectly or you can change it the actual scale here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to rotate on the y and have it as minus 90 and this one minus 90 so things flow a little bit more seamlessly there so i know it's not perfect but the whole idea of this is we're getting a playable area right now that at least doesn't look like a big white cube so Let's now look at a little bit of physics. So physics are important in pretty much any game. And the most simplest of physics that we could use is gravity. So let's apply gravity to this crate right here. So I'm going to drag it up into the air. And if I press play, nothing is going to happen at all. Just absolutely nothing at all. It's just floating up there. You can see in the scene view, that's all it's doing. To apply simple gravity, all we really need to do is apply one component to it called a rigid body. So make sure you have that crate selected. Click on add component down here and you can click on physics. And in this list, you'll find something called rigid body. Now, just applying that and pressing play, it will just apply gravity to it straight away. There we go. Cool. It fell out the sky.
And obviously we can play around with it. We can change the mass. We can put it as a huge mass, 149, for example. It's not going to make too much of a difference, especially if you start increasing the drag. This is where you will see um, things start moving a bit differently. You can see the drag is causing a slower gravity effect. And if we change it, you can see that it does affect it. Now, it's probably worth noting that that kind of effect is used for maybe something like a balloon or something. But we have um, this big crate. Uh, if we tick is kinematic right there and press play, nothing is going to happen. Again, this all comes down to everything that you are setting up here. Now, I know a lot of the time gravity and physics in general can be somewhat not difficult, but they can have undesired effects depending on what you're playing around with. So what I would kind of recommend here is if you want to play around with some of this stuff, you know, put random figures in, just see what kind of effects you can come up with. You can find all kinds of different things here. And you, know, you can play around with the mass if you want to. You're not going to break anything, I, I don't think. But there is points uh, that you can change things. So when objects are intersected and have a rigid body attached, you can create some peculiar effects. So to show you what I mean by that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Game Object, 3D Object, and let's go to Sphere. And this sphere, let's zero out the position. And I'm going to increase the scale to 3 by 3 by 3 and also bring it up inside here and probably just move it slightly there. I'm also going to attach a rigid body to it. So physics and rigid body and press play. So you'll notice that this particular object kind of shifted itself out and it's now rolling, obviously, because it's a ball. That's the beauty of uh, unity in a sense the fact that both of these objects can be intersected they still function correctly but something like a ball knows it's a ball without you having to do anything else and it will be affected by what you're doing so if i turn the sphere off up here you see this little tick box there if i turn that off and bring it downwards to about there turn it back on just to make sure it's okay that's it bit further down so let's put it about there and turn it off obviously that means the object will no longer function in the scene and this crate will just function as normal and if we turn it on you can see how much of an effect that can have so keeping in mind that turning on objects like this that contain physics can have different types of effects so you could think of this in some ways as we could create some kind of explosion effect in some kind of way. I think it just depends on what you want to do. Uh, if we put the sphere back on and put it there, and then if we duplicate and put the sphere also there and another sphere probably somewhere here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to couple these spheres together. This is called parent and child. So I'm going to drag sphere one onto the original sphere and then drag sphere two onto the original sphere as well and then select that original sphere and you can see that all three of those objects are now selected and we can turn them off now if we press play again the crate's fallen that's good we can turn this these well these spheres on and we have a strange effect because you can see that each one of those split in a different way if we go into the scene view, we can see. Now this one is going to roll off. And there we go. So that will now fall infinitely because there's nothing stopping it. There is no floor for that to ever stop. The same will obviously apply to this when it finally rolls off. But again, the effect what we've done here is we have created a different style of uh, physics movement just by moving and changing a couple of aspects. So if I move the sphere here, this crate will now blast towards the camera when we turn those spheres on. So if we press play and then turn those spheres on. So if you could imagine we have maybe fired a grenade or something like that and it's hit and the crate's gone boo and 
exploded, kind of. You can use physics to replicate that kind of effect as long as you place things correctly and play around. So what I would recommend at this point is to maybe play around with some aspects of this rigid body. You know, you don't need to go too in-depth with what you're doing, but it's always fun to play with physics. I've got to be honest, it's one of my favourite things to do in Unity, and to see what kind of simple effects you can create just from playing around with a couple of game objects. So next tutorial, what we're going to do is we are going to create um, some more lighting. We're going to play with lights, and we're also going to bring in a player so we can walk around in this scene and actually make it a game at last. So until that next tutorial, thanks very much for watching.